first thing you want to learn when you hit Alcatraz is keep your mouth shut, walk with your back to the wall. The Alcatraz cell house opened as a federal prison in 1934. Within these walls lived the country's toughest, most dangerous, and most famous prisoners. Broadway was the first stop for arriving prisoners. We went right down Broadway, you know, in our birthday suits. <laughs> and all the guys, you know, are howling. And a typical Alcatraz cell. Every one of them in the cell house is exactly like. Had a metal tabletop and a little chair there, and that was about it. Fell a few barren. Five feet wide, nine feet long, and seven feet high. That's what I call a little box. No decorations allowed. Anything couldn't paste anything on the wall. Waiting on the bed for each new prisoner was a copy of the official rules and regulations. This is the rules of the cell house. Your cell is subject to search at any time. Your towel had to be folded up and put on your shelf. Your toothbrush, and they used to give us tooth powder in little green containers. I guess like a cockroach feels in a matchbox. You may smoke in your cell in the library. We were issued a pack of wings on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. Every inmate, whether he smoked or not. Sweep your cell and place the trash in the trash bin. I knew where you mark everything in that cell. And sweep your cell and place the trash in the trash bin. I knew where you mark everything in that cell. And pretty soon that cell became like a part of me. Well, I became a part of the cell. Alcatraz is always classed as the end of the line, the point of no return. It's like going into the ground. You know, when you're buried, you're gone forever. Prisoners had a decision to make, whether to obey the rules or not, to do good time or bad time. That decision affected their lives dramatically. An inmate is given housing, good food, medical attention, and all the necessities of life. Everything else was a privilege. Time to exercise outside, getting books and mail all had to be earned. One of their favorite privileges was the recreation yard. The most pleasant place, I believe, on Alcatraz, and the most appreciated. The handball court, the horseshoe court. Prisoners also played bridge out in the yard. They used dominoes instead of cards. They came out with a system called auto bridge. You played it all by yourself. Guys got so wound up in this bridge thing that they ate and slept it. They'd go out there and it would be so cold that you didn't think you could stay out there, yet they'd stay out there for three hours and play bridge. And if you're occupied with bridge and you're studying bridge, you're not thinking about going over the wall. Prisoners who chose not to behave ended up in a harsher place, isolation. D Block was a prison within Alcatraz, the treatment unit. This place is going to operate on the basis that you do what you're told, and you're going to get a fair break. If you don't behave yourself, we're going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. Unruly or violent prisoners were sent here. They stayed in their cells 24 hours a day. Typically, they were only allowed out once a week for a shower and exercise. Now, in this cell block, we have 42 of the least popular cells in Alcatraz. Although by far they are the best, the roomiest, and the nicest state-of-the-art cells that were available in this prison. It was cold. It was damp. The wind used to just blow through there. You could hear it. At night, you could hear it whistling through the window. One of the more infamous prisoners to live here in D Block was convicted killer Robert Stroud, the so-called Birdman. And almost immediately upon his arrival at Alcatraz, he was relegated to the uh, treatment here. And he didn't bring his birds along with him, which made him very unhappy. But he brought all his bad habits with him, which made us unhappy. This was solitary confinement, the whole cells 9 through 14. When the cell was occupied, the regulations required that the light be on. 
But we kept the lights off when they were in there. They were in the dark. Well, and I'd go in the hole. What I used to do is I'd tear a button off my coveralls. I'd flip it up in the air. Then I'd turn around in circles. Then I'd get down on my hands and knees and I'd hunt for that button. And when I found the button, I'd stand up and I'd do it again. But if you would close your eyes like right now, close your eyes and seal your eyes off with your hand, with a little concentration you can see a light and pretty soon that light will get brighter. And you've got to concentrate on this. And after a while, not a short while, this takes time and practice, but pretty soon you can almost put your own TV there and you can see things and you can go on trips and this is what I did. This was the prison library. You put your request on a library card. If the book was available, they'd bring it and put it in the bars for you. Prisoners with reading privileges could subscribe to approved magazines. Yeah. Remember they had some story about some convict out of Nebraska or something that was cut out. Never mind that you might have been reading a serial and it was on the back of one of their pages. Prisoners who behaved could also take correspondence courses. Took a course from the University of Pennsylvania on animal husbandry. The gestation period for a pig is uh, three months, three weeks, and three days. I used to do a lot of oil paintings on Alcatraz. If I was painting a, a scene of the Swiss Alps or something like that, hey, I'm right up there skiing as I'm painting, and I used to escape that way. My grandmother taught me how to crochet when I was a kid. So I taught a lot of guys how to crochet. Big tough guys sitting in there with a beetle and crocheting. <laughs> At night time, between 6.30 and 7.30, they have what they call the music hour. They play harmonicas or a guitar or whatnot. They had one guy over there, and he used to play when he slide some bones. Look up at the windows. They face San Francisco and the setting sun. The Yacht Club, which was directly across from the island, would always have a big New Year's party. If the wind was blowing from that direction to the rock, you could actually hear people laughing, you could hear music, you could hear girls laughing, you know, you could hear all the sounds that were coming from the free world at the rock. The New Year's was always the night we heard it. Look for four small windows in the wall on the right. They're marked visitation. And I walked up there and here's this good looking girl. I knew who she was when I got a real good look at her and when she said Jimmy, Jimmy. which was what she always called me. Well, I knew it was my sesh. Once I saw Jimmy, it was, you know, he didn't look different and he was overwhelmed and, and we just, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it that we were there and that, that I had grown up and that I'd come to see him. Uniform was prison gray with a hat. I wore a hat all the time. Regular double-breasted uniform. And they used to call you red ties because everybody in the place had this red tie on. I carried a sap. We weren't supposed to, but many of us did. When you got done work, you just run down, catch the next boat, and you're in San Francisco in 12 minutes. We all worked together. We all played together. We had two bowling alleys where we had bowling leagues. We never locked our doors or anything in the island. Never. We couldn't beat Alcatraz, but the beautiful view there. So there was never a day you didn't see what the hell you were losing and what you were missing. You know, it was all there for you to see. There's life. There's everything I want in my life, and it's there. It's a mile or a mile and a half away, and yet I can't get to it. I recall getting that water and it was like a shock. I didn't expect it to be that cold. If you can do it, it's up to you. But you got to pay the price. When they heard the escape siren, every officer on the island rushed here to report for duty. Three men were missing from the cell house. 
for inmates are so supposed to be dressed and up standing in front of their doors for count. Bill, Bill, there's a guy up here I can't get up. Hey. And he was laying in there, so I reached in through the bars and I hit the pillow. Yeah. The Lord knows what happened. The head fell off on the floor. Prisoners Frank Lee Morris and two brothers, John and Clarence Angland, had escaped the night before. They made dummy heads to fool the officers. According to the reports, the men enlarged the vent openings in the back of their cell. The three men climbed up these pipes to the roof. The men have never been found. At the end of three decades, over 1,500 men had served time on the rock. By then, Alcatraz had served its own time. After years of harsh wind and weather, the buildings were badly deteriorated. The isolated island was too expensive to run. Goodbye, and thank you for visiting Alcatraz.